All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakudash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashem meaning in the name. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect. Within the nation of Israel, Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, as well as you um, Israelites um, scattered abroad that may look like the nations um, that you're uh, intermingled with, you know, but our Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful of life, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, so uh, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in Des Moines, Iowa, coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit. And um, I was scrolling through uh, Zero Hedge. Just looking up different uh, various articles with things that are happening. And I came across this article, which is uh, somewhat funny, you know, but um, but uh, I had a few scriptures popped into my mind. All right. Concerning um, these beasts all right, that the Lord is going to allow pursuant to the book of Sirach, the 39th chapter uh, to execute uh, his judgment and his vengeance. All right. Um, upon these people in these uh, coming days. All right. And we'll get some precepts to go into it, but I'm going to go ahead and read this article. It's real short, so so uh, let's hop into it, all right? So this is, uh, once again, from ZeroHedge.com. Uh, uh, it says, Massive monkey gangs are fighting for food on Thailand streets as tourist food disappears. All right, coronavirus uh, isn't just causing humans to fight in the aisles of Target over toilet paper. Today, in signs of the apocalypse, hungry monkey gangs are also swarming and fighting for food on the streets of Thailand. Monkeys in the country are usually well fed by tourists who visit Thailand, but visitors have plummeted, uh, plummeted as a result of the coronavirus outbreak, which has hit the Asian region hard. The animals shown in the video are reported to be two separate <laughs> rival gangs that dwell in the city, according to the Daily Mail. Half of the monkeys are said to live in the temple areas, while the others live in the city. The two groups don't usually meet, but ended up doing so this past week. And I'll play the video as well. But it says um, the animals are shown wandering separately looking for food. But once one monkey finds a banana, the chase is on. And a lot of these people out here are, are looking just like these monkeys are right? chasing um, food or right? attacking one another and everything like that, you know, uh, because majority of these people are brute beasts, man. All right. And it's going to be shown in these coming days, as the scripture says in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. All right. It talks about it in the second Ezra that the love of many shall uh, wax cold. All right. As a matter of fact. Let me just grab a precept just on that point. You know, hey, call all you might, y'all, by Shimmy, I was shot 144. Um, lack of bread. All right, this is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, and verse, uh, um, I'll start at verse um, 16. It says, For there shall be sedition among men and evading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the courses of their actions shall stand in their power. All right, and that's all out anarchy in uh, various in these cities. All right, and we see, uh, we see uh, everything leading up into these things. All right, it's already happening on a small scale. All right, but these things are going to only increase. It says, "A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able." All right, we see that with cities being blocked off. All right, you got quarantine zones that are happening, or right, um, you've got. Um, Borders being uh completely uh stopped, all right, from uh any people going in and out, all right. Just like Trump, he just declared that uh no no uh travel can be done with any uh body from America to Europe, all right, closing the borders for thirty days. All right, so these are things that are happening right now, and as we get closer to the coming of the Lord, these prophecies are gonna pop off of the page more and more. All right, as uh the sand in the world, all right, then uh the new sand in the world goes, it hits different. All right. And that's what's kind of happening right now. These prophecies, these scriptures that we've been reading, they're hitting a little different now, man. All right. Because you're seeing them right in your face, as it says in the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter, at the end, it shall speak and not lie. So these prophecies are speaking. All right. But uh, it says, verse uh, 18, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So this is how people act. All right. When there's a lack of bread. All right. I just watched a, a clip earlier this morning on uh, RT, I believe. And it was um, uh, it might have been RT or it could have been a brother that reposted it. But nevertheless, it was these women 
that were fighting in the store over uh, uh, the last um, thing of toilet paper, man. All right. You had somebody that got stabbed, I believe, yesterday. I saw all right, somebody that got stabbed over some toilet paper as well. Like niggas is bugging out. All right. And the scripture says, um, Yahweh Shai said, if they do this in a green tree, all right, what shall they do? All right. Uh, roughly. Pay well, let me just let me just uh, pull it up. All right. Because really right now, I mean, this is only the beginning of sorrows. Like it's not even that bad <laughs> yet, you know, and the scriptures talk about. Let me see. Uh, where is it at? do this in the green tree all right luke chapter 23 and uh, 31 it says for if they do these things in the green tree what shall be done in the dry so the green tree that's when things are flourishing that's when um you know uh the the fruits all right maybe coming off the tree you know and so on and so forth right but applying it unto this time all right so there's still access to your stores all right still got certain comforts all right so what's going to happen when these things are really taken away, all right, where there's really no food that's available, man, okay? How are people going to react, man, all right? We see how people act at in Black Friday sales and things of that nature over televisions and so on and so forth, all right? People are bugging out over toilet paper, but what about when there's actually no food? If people are getting stabbed over toilet paper, all right, what are they going to do when it's, it's, no, more, it's no, more, uh, uh, no more food left in these stores, man? All right, people are going to bug out. OK, but to get back to this article, let me see if I finish that um, in second Ezra. All right. Yeah, let me finish it out. Second Ezra 15 and 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right. And we're about to enter into great tribulation. All right. But jumping back into this article, all right, it says um, Right here underneath the picture, it says the animals are shown wandering separately looking for food. But once one monkey finds a banana, the chase is on. <laughs> the uh, ferocity or right, the ferocity of the animals shocked even locals who are used to seeing the monkeys on a daily basis. One onlooker who captured video said they look more like wild dogs than monkeys. They went crazy for the single piece of food. I've never seen them this aggressive. Right. And you're going to see. All right, uh, the, the, the Lord put the spirit on these animals, all right, to be more aggressive, man. All right, they aren't going to be being fed. All right, these domesticated animals, dogs, and so on and so forth. All right, here it is. The people aren't eating, so you think they're going to be able to feed their, uh, feed their animals, man? What's going to happen, man? All right, they're going to go back to their nature, their beast-like nature, man. All right, you're going to have uh, the scriptures talk about specifically even dogs, all right, being used to, uh, to tear these people into pieces, man. Okay? Wild animals, man, according to <coughs> uh, Salakia, uh, Barakia. All right, according to, uh, <clears throat> according to the prophecies, which we're going to jump into, it says, <clears throat> I've never seen them this aggressive. Um, uh, the onlooker explained, I think the monkeys were very, very hungry. There's normally a lot of tourists here to feed the monkeys, but now there are not as many because of the coronavirus. So what's going to happen all right, to these animals in the zoos and so on and so forth, all right? Or when these uh, animals <clears throat> go out searching, all right, they come out of their habitats and they start walking on, uh, walking, walking throughout the cities, man, okay? Just like you've seen in I Am Legend. And I Am Legend, all right, came to a point to where uh, Will Smith, all right, he was out in the, uh, in the city and it was uh, lions, man. All right, you had lions uh, going through the city, deer going through the city and so on and so forth, all right? People think, oh, that's just theatrics and so on and so forth. That was, that's just in the movies. Well, these things are going to be happening in uh, everyday life. And it's really going to be judgment from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So let me go ahead and play um, the clip. Uh, here. And then and grab it, all right? Uh, Salakia. Uh, here it goes. Look at all these animals, all these monkeys. This looks, uh, it looks like something out of uh, Jumanji, all right? I think it was a scene out of like the first Jumanji where they had these uh, monkeys that were coming out of nowhere, man, all right? So it's all funny games right now, but what the Lord is going to do upon the planet Earth, man, it's going to be unparalleled, man. So right now it may seem far-fetched, but when these animals, the Lord uh, uh, puts the spirit on them, as we're going to read, man, to execute his judgment, people are going to be uh, flabbergasted, <laughs> all right? They're going to be appalled. <laughs> 
All right, this is the book of uh, Sirach, chapter 39. Hey, we even going to see certain things and be like, God damn, I didn't know the Lord was going to do it like that. Like, sheesh. All right, Sirach, chapter 39, in verse um, 28, it says, There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. And the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. All right, so the Lord has spirits of vengeance that he's going to allow to be released in these last days, all right? So the Lord could put the spirit of vengeance upon a person, all right, to, com uh, to commit, <clears throat> to give them over to the spirit, to where they commit certain uh, heinous acts, all right, to bring forth judgment by Yah, by Shemir, or the Lord could put the spirit on an animal to do the same, man. A uh, prime example is, uh, we can go into an example, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to grab it, I'm going to grab the whole account, all right? Lord. Head. All right. This is the book of um damn tripping. This is the book of Second Kings, chapter two, and verse uh twenty. Yeah, and uh, twenty-two. All right. Now this is an example of the Lord using animals to execute his vengeance. All right. All right. So uh Second Kings two and twenty-two it says, So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him, go up thou bald head, go up thou bald head. So right now, Elisha was mourning because Elijah, or when you read uh, in the previous chapter or earlier up in this chapter, he had just got beamed up in a chariot. All right. And that was his guy. All right. So he was mourning, man. So here it is. He's in his mourning. You got these badass little kids talking trash, man. You know, how, you know, how uh, Jake is, man. Jake get to talking all types of uh, tr uh, shit to you, man. Especially the little badass baby kids, all right? Cracking funny jokes on you. All right, well, uh, uh, Alicia, he didn't think it was funny, man. All right, he got pissed off, and the Lord didn't think it was funny as well, all right? And we're going to see. It says, verse 24, um, it says, And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. So he got pissed off, even though they were little, they were little badass kids. He got pissed off and put curses on them. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children, uh, forty and two children of them. All right. So two bears came out of nowhere and started slaughtering, man. Blood everywhere, man. All right. Kids screaming at the top of their lungs, running, trying to uh, run away from these bears. They slaughter the bears slaughter forty two of them. So the Lord put the spirit on that animal to execute his judgment. And it's going to be the same things happening in this time period, man. People that mock the prophet say the, uh, the Lord could send a, a spirit of vengeance on one of these animals to, to tear these uh, these people into pieces, man. So this isn't something that's far fetched. This is right out of the scriptures. All right. So let's go back to the book of Sirach, the 39th chapter. It says, verse uh, 28, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of their destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So that appeased all right, the wrath of the Lord. All right, when he sent those two she bears to to execute judgment upon them, man, you know their parents had to be crying when they uh, they they got back, heard the report of what happened, man. All right, you think the Lord care? Okay, <laughs> think the Lord pitied them? No. All right, Scripture says, "Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm, man." See, the people are gonna learn that you you uh, mistreating the prophets and misusing them and so on and so forth is great repercussions, man. As the Lord said, Yahweh said, if. Uh, if you offend any of these little ones, all right, any of those that believe on the Lord, man, all right, the true believers, if you uh, offend any of these little ones, it's better that a millstone be wrapped around your neck and you be cast into the sea. So the Lord was like, it's really better that you have killed yourself than to offend any of my uh, any of my servants, man. All right. And we say these things, but it's really going to be hitting home. All right. Those those scriptures is going to hit different when you see the judgment being executed by Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, man. All right. When it's right in your face, man, when somebody comes up and scoffs and, and, and the Lord all right, uh, uh, has them drop dead right then, man. All right. We're coming in those type of times, man. Sirach so chapter 39 and verse uh, 29. It says fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. All right. So you're going to have uh, wild beasts that are going to be used to punish the wicked. All right. Scorpions, serpents. All right. The swore all these are used to do what? To punish the wicked, man. So the Lord could put the spirit on these monkeys. All right. To start punishing uh, these people in Thailand, man. And it's going to be judgment from Yahweh Shai. 
It says, verse 31, they shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. So they're going to execute the judgment that the Lord has set forth for them, man. All right. And they're going to do it perfectly, man. No matter how gruesome it is, man, the scriptures talk about uh, from the Lord belongeth the, uh, the issues of death. OK, and you, when you look up that word uh, issues in the blue letter, one point that it says is that uh, the extremity, man. So it doesn't matter how extreme that death is. It's the how about Shimei was shy that um, that uh, executed it, man. All right. Pursuant to the book of Amos, the third chapter, it says, uh, um, shall there be evil in the city and the Lord had not done it. All right. So any evil, any bad thing that happens, man, it's the Lord that ordains it, man. The scripture says a sparrow can't even fall from heaven unless the Lord ordains it. All right. So the Lord, hey, he's in control of everything. All right. Let me pull up this scripture just to back up that point I said about the issues of death. So this is the book of uh, Psalms, the 68th chapter. I believe it's the 68th chapter. Uh, yep. 68 and 20. It says, uh, he that is our power is the power of salvation. And unto the most high, the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, belong the issues from death. And we look up that word issues. All right. It says outgoing, uh, border, a going out, extremity, end source, escape, outgoing, extremity. All right. So it doesn't matter how extreme, okay, that death is, the Lord ordained it, man. All right. And that's why, and the Lord is going to be doing some very... A, uh, uh, extreme and strange things to, to put these people to death, to bring the fear of him uh, upon the planet Earth, man. All right, as it says in the book of uh, Sirach, the 10th chapter, it says, Sirach chapter 10 and verse uh, 13, for pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath, he that hath it shall pour out abomination. Right. So, and, and this world is in, engulfed in great pride, man. All right. Simply the fact that you don't want to do the will of Yahweh Shai, you're walking in great pride. You're saying, I want to do whatever the hell I want to do. All right. That's prideful in the eyes of the Lord. And let me back that up. All right. Just to prove that point, because a lot of people don't think that they're they're really walking in pride. You just not submitting to the will of Yahweh Shai. You're walking in pride, man. All right. This is the book of Sirach, chapter five and verse one. Set thy heart, set not thy heart upon thy goods. All right. It's an uh, error. Uh, in the app here, but when you read it, it says, set not thy heart upon thy goods and say not, I have enough for my life. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. So don't do whatever the hell you want to do, right? Because our whole purpose is to fear the most high and keep his commandments pursuant to Ecclesiastes 12th chapter, right? So that's what we're supposed to do. We have to forsake our own ways, man. All right. And do what's pleasing unto him. So it says, and say not, uh, verse two, follow not thine own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart and say not who shall control me for my works for the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. All right. So you having that mindset, I'm going to do what I want. OK. I don't care what the Bible says or this and that and the third and blah, blah, blah. blah. You know, that mindset the Lord is looking at as if you're walking in great pride, man. OK. So what's going to happen to those that walk in great pride back in Sirach chapter 10? And verse 13, for pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. And therefore, the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. Now, that's strange calamities, man. Hey, how those children got killed? That's a strange calamity, man. Two she bears slaughtered them. All right. These monkeys walking down in the street. This is some Jumanji shit, man. If people start getting put to death, these monkeys start getting hungry. Hey, they said that they, they were uh, ferocious. All right. They were uh, 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 very aggressive, more than what they've seen them before. So when they get more aggressive and the Lord puts the spirit on them and they actually started start going through the cities and putting people to death. All right. It's because of their pride, man. It's the Lord that did it. OK, these things, once again, are not far fetched, man. OK, hey, the Lord has uh, a Leviathan, a great animal that he's going to use to execute his judgment, man. OK, in these last days. So let's uh, go ahead and um, finish off with this in the book. Let me see. Uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't back up that point. Well, I, uh, I, I might have quoted it, but this is Jeremiah chapter 15. Just to show you that uh, even the dogs are going to be sent to tear. And that, and that can be applied to any animal. All right. As we just proved, there's spirits that are created for vengeance. It could be on a, any type of animal, man. Okay. This is Jeremiah chapter uh, 15. 
Hey, the Lord can have it to where uh, uh, birds just start coming down and, and plucking off your skin, man. All right. As if you're a dead carcass. OK, because birds come when they, they, they get the dead car uh, carcass or right? they come down there, they'll, they'll pluck off the skin and everything like that, man. All right. The Lord can have it to where uh, he puts it in a spirit as if you're dead, man. All right. And then just starts plucking, plucking off your skin. I think it's a movie called The Birds or something like that. I, I know I've heard uh, people mention it. All right. But those things are going to be happening, man. Hey, it is going to get real bugged out out here, man. It says because of their uh, pride, strange calamities came upon them. I, I believe I finished on that preset. Yep. Strange calamities. Uh, uh, yep. Came upon them and overthrew them utterly, man. That's a strange calamity, man. All right. But this is the book of Jeremiah 15 and 1. And then said the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh unto me, though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. All right. Speaking of you Israelites, man. All right. Being rebellious, man. So the Lord's like, I'm not dealing with you. And the scripture said in uh, Jeremiah, the 16th chapter, the next chapter over, how the Lord has taken away his peace from this people, man, and that they shall die of grievous deaths. As a matter of fact, Jeremiah 16 and 2, it says, uh, verse 3 says, For thus saith the Lord concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place and concerning their mothers that bear them and concerning their fathers that begot them in this land, they shall die of grievous deaths. All right. So you're not only going to die, you're going to die of a grievous death, man. OK, the Lord is going to be sending people back to the spiritual realm in the most miraculous ways, man. In these end times. All right. It says for the hey, is, hey the scriptures talk about how um, in the book of Revelations, it says that they shall seek death and not find it. Now, that was speaking of, I believe it was World War One. Or uh, World War Two. All right. Um, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure. I have to go back and uh, uh, read it. All right. And, and, and uh, see which war it was speaking of. But nevertheless, that was happening back then during that time, during that war, because they didn't have the, the technology, the anesthesia. You had uh, people that were uh, uh, limbs blown off and they were still alive, man. OK. All right. Uh, different things like that, uh, that they were going through and they were still alive to where the point they wanted to die. Well, if we're coming into a time that's like no other than the time that we're about to enter into is going to be greater than that, man. Pursuing the Daniels, the 12th chapter. All right. 12 and 1. Matthew's the 24th chapter. There's, uh, the, the Lord uh, said the same thing, man. This day is going to be like no other day. So if we can read about a time where people were seeking death and not finding it, how much more in this time period, man? People are going to want to die, man. All right. Esau is going to be throwing people in these uh, concentration camps, torturing them, man. They're going to be like, man, just kill me already. And the Lord is going to put the spirit on them to, uh, to keep torturing people. Pursuing the second Ezra, the ninth chapter, it says that they shall dwell in torments. That's you dwelling in torments, man. Hey, Isaiah the 66 chapter says that uh, the Lord will bring your fears upon you, man. All right. So whatever you fear the most, man, the Lord is going to bring it upon you, man, in these times. All right. So this is the book of uh, Jeremiah 16 and uh, 4. They shall die of grievous deaths. They shall not be lamented. Neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as as dung upon the face of the earth. And they shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine and their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And that's the spirit because I didn't even know that was right there, man. Their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth, man. So that's what's going to be happening, man. You're going to have dead bodies laid out in the street and just animals coming by, eating them, tearing them up, man. All right. Devouring them, man. Okay. People running away from, uh, you shoot, you, we talk about running away from martial law troops. Well, you're going to have to run away from some of these wild beasts, man. You have to run away. <laughs> in Thailand, these niggas going to have to run away from these monkeys, man, when the time comes, all right? It says, um, let me jump down where it says, uh, man, uh, Jeremiah uh, 16 and 9. For thus saith the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, the power of Israel, behold, I will cause to cease uh, to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your days, the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. And we see that happening right now. The Lord is taking away all the joy from out of this place, man, and joy away from you Israelites, man. All right. It says, um, uh, let's see. I know it says, well, I mean, you know, I, I won't, I won't uh, spend too much time searching for it. I believe it says that the Lord has taken away his peace, uh, from this people. But, um, yep. All right. Verse five for thus saith the Lord, Yahweh enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to lament nor bemoan them. For I've taken away my peace from this people, saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, even loving kindness and mercies, man. And you're going to see it in this time period because the Lord has stretched out his hand by sending his prophets because he had compassion upon his people. All right. By sending the prophets out on the highways and byways so that you could repent, you could learn how to please the Lord. 
All right, how to walk uprightly before him. But you mocked the messengers. You misused the prophets until the wrath of the Lord came and there was no remedy. Pursuing the second, uh, second Chronicles, the 36th chapter. All right. So when that time comes, he's going to laugh and mock at your calamities. All right. Mock when your fear cometh, man. Okay. You rejected the Lord, man. All right. So he's going to reject you. You rejected this knowledge. So he's going to reject you. All right. And allow you to experience these things, man. All right. To allow you to, to dwell in torments, man. Okay. To allow these animals, these beasts, whatever the Lord has ordained for you to go through to, to experience that judgment, man. To learn the fear of him. All right. And to know that it is nothing sweeter than fearing the Lord, man. All right. But this is uh, back in Jeremiah 15 and 2. And it shall come to pass and that uh, and it shall come to pass if they say unto thee, where the shall we go for? Right. Niggas come trying to get answers now. OK. It says they shall seek me early uh, in their affliction. Roughly paraphrasing that in the book of uh, in the book of Hosea, uh, Hosea man. OK. Hey, you're going to be seeking the Lord as soon as hey, shit starting to hit the fan. People, Jake going to be trying to seek the Lord. Well, the Lord may have closed the doors of repentance for you, man. It may be too late because you put off the Lord day to day, as it says in that Sirach, the fifth chapter, man. All right. It ain't the time to be playing around with the Lord, playing around with your salvation, man. We see the Lord is going to be dropping people dead left and right. Pestilences, natural disasters, wild beasts. All right. A uh, apparitions, man. It's going to get wild out here, Joe. All right. This is uh, Jeremiah 15 and 3 it says, and I will point or 15 and 2. And it shall come to pass if they uh, say unto thee, whether shall we go forth, then... Thou shalt tell them, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. So when you come to the prophets in that day, if you aren't of the elect, hey, we ain't got no answers for you, buddy. All right. Through the spirit and power, by Shimmy, I was shy. Shoot, we, we hoping that we getting delivered, man. The scriptures say even the righteous shall scarcely be saved, man. So we walking in the fear of Yahweh, by Shimmy, I was shy, man. Hey, if you come in uh, to the prophets in that time and, and, and you haven't made right with Yahweh by Shimei Abishai, you haven't repented, man. Hey, man, it, it, we ain't got nothing to tell you, man. It's a concentration camp right up the road, man. Go see, uh, uh go go check it out there, man. All right, they got chipping stations there. You ain't got no food. All right, they might they may feed you. Take the chip. How about that? All right, it's too late, man. We ain't got no answers for you. All right, this is Jeremiah fifteen and uh, uh, uh four. It says, and I will cause them, uh, verse three, and I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, the sword to slay. And the dogs to tear, and the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy. So the Lord is gonna have these animals to devour and to destroy, man. All right, dogs to tear, fowls of the heaven. All right. So this is a part of prophecy, man. These wild beasts coming out of nowhere and destroying Jake, man. And just to be clear, hey, hey, none of the elect, all right, none of the elect is gonna take that chip, man. All right. It's not gonna take that RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast, man. All right. You take that chip. You clearly are out of the uh, of the elect because you can't repent from taking that chip. You're gonna uh, you're gonna uh, be in that lake of fire. All right, you're gonna experience a uh, 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 great judgment from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. All right, but um, let me go ahead and finish off with this. All right, because even though all these animals are gonna be out here, and hey, the Lord is gonna protect His men, man. All right, <coughs> this is Jeremiah chapter five. <coughs> In verse 19, it says, he shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee, right? And that seven trouble is ultimately the nuclear fire, man, okay? So we may go through certain things, particular experiences, man, to try our faith, but when it comes down to them newts, hey, they ain't going to touch the elect, man, all right? It says, um, in famine, he shall redeem thee from death, right? So none of the elect is going to die of a famine, all right? He's going to make sure that, uh, that, uh, uh, that the elect is taken care of, man. Is fed, as it says, Isaiah 65, my servant shall eat, all right? And in war from the power of the sword, thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh, all right? And that's what we're doing. We're already rejoicing, all right? Even though we walk in the fear of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, but at the same time, we're laughing because what? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, our elders and apostles have told you so, man. We told you all these things were going to happen. Now you want to come seeking the uh, prophets. Now you want to come seeking the men of the Lord. Now you chill. your child gets thrown in the concentration camp, and now you want to come seeking uh, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Now you want to know the name, name of the Lord, man. We're going to laugh at you niggas, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Hey, pursuant to that Proverbs, the first chapter that I quoted earlier, man. It says, um, and thou shalt, uh, let me see. 
Verse 22, at destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh, neither shall thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. So we ain't going to be afraid of these wild beasts, man. As a matter of fact, they're going to be on our side. <laughs> Verse 23, for thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. That's right. Hey, man, hey, we, we don't know how the Lord, man, the Lord can have it to where we were pilgrims. As the scripture said, we're going to be, be, uh, be pilgrims. All right. And these coming days, man. Hey, uh, the Lord could put the spirit on a uh, wild beast uh, to protect us, to defend us. All right. Just like he did with uh, Elisha, man. Okay. Just hey, it could be some martial law troops chasing Jacob, whatever the case may be. And a damn lion just comes out of nowhere and slaughters all the troops, man. Like that. Hey, that's the power we're dealing with, man. We're coming in those days, man. So, you know, I just kind of want to go through that through the spirit. You know, I uh, saw that article and had those precepts pop into my mind. So, uh, Lord's word, I was edifying. I'm going to end, end it right there and give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakudash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.